Hello, and welcome to the second in our series of How Do I? Professional Development Training. This time we'll be talking about the Moodle quiz, how to both create and then grade using the online Moodle quizzes. We hope you enjoy it. There are two steps in the process of creating a quiz in Moodle. First, you must create a quiz activity placeholder in the proper week of the class. Then you must populate that quiz with questions from the question bank. While these two steps are all that is necessary to create a quiz, we also recommend a third step, verifying the answer key in Gradebook. This training will cover all three steps. To start the process, we must turn editing on. Once on, we select a week and click on the pull-down to add an activity. And we click on Quiz to open the Quiz dialog page. As you can see, the Quiz Name field is a required item on this page, as shown by the red font and asterisk. The system will not save your work without something in this field. Let's type in Quiz 3 in the field. Good practice on a quiz is to give basic information about the quiz in the description. You can either show this directly on the front page by clicking on the Display Description on Course Page box, or the students will see the description when they click on the quiz itself, but before actually having to take the quiz. Below the General section, there are multiple sections that control the quiz options. We'll move through each one in detail. If you ever find that you need to change an option later in the process, you can click on the Gear icon, Edit Settings, associated with a quiz on the front page to reopen this page. By choosing the Enable click boxes for Open or Close the quiz, or both, you can limit student access to the quiz. You can choose the day and time at which students can access the quiz, as well as the day and time to close it. If you leave the click boxes unchecked, the quiz will remain open for the length of the course. You can enable a time limit for the quiz by clicking in the appropriate Enable box and setting the number of minutes for the quiz. Here, we'll enter 15 minutes. There are three options available that the system can take when a student fails to submit the quiz prior to the deadline expiring. The default option is not the best. In the default option, if the students do not save their work prior to the time elapsing, all of their answers will be lost. The second option, which provides students with a grace period, does not increase the amount of time they have on the quiz, but it does add another layer of complexity. The best option is to choose Open Attempts are Submitted Automatically. This ensures that all student answers, even those of students who are not able to complete the quiz on time, are saved and graded. This minimizes the amount of turbulence felt by the instructor due to online quizzes. Because we chose not to use a grace period, we do not need to add a length of time for that grace period. We also have three grading options available to us. If you chose to use grade categories, you can select which category you wish the quiz to fall into here. You can restrict the number of times a student can take the quiz under the Attempts Allowed option. If you only want to give the students a single attempt, then choose one. If you want them to try the quiz multiple times, in order to gain mastery, for instance, you can select the number of times they can take the quiz or just leave it unlimited. While in most cases we want to take the highest grade achieved on the quiz, depending on your desires the number of times you allow the students to take the quiz, you can choose to use the highest, lowest, or average grade achieved. We will leave it at the highest grade since we're only allowing one attempt. The layout options include one advanced setting. In question order, the questions can be given in the order they were entered into the question bank, or you can choose to have them shuffled randomly. Some people believe that by giving the questions in the same order as the materials were covered in the textbook, the students will gain an advantage. Others believe that some form of scrambling is necessary to ensure that students have retained the material or to try to prevent cheating. We will choose Shuffle Randomly. The default layout is to have one question per page. Some instructors believe that this allows students to clearly move from one question to another, while others worry that students will be lost flipping from page to page. Depending on whether you're more concerned with scrolling or flipping, you can choose the number of questions presented in a given page to students. The advanced option is the navigation method. The default is free, allowing students to move backwards and forwards along the pages as they're answering questions. This is most often the best option. The other option, sequential, forces students to move linearly through the questions. They cannot move backwards to add an answer or change a prior answer. We'll leave the default setting. 
The question behavior options also include one advanced setting. Note, advanced settings are indicated by a green asterisk. The default option under Shuffle within the questions is yes, and this is the best setting. It shuffles the potential responses without changing the question order. However, because there are no pinning capabilities within Moodle, you'll need to modify any question that has a response such as all the above or none of the above to something along the lines of all of these are and none of these are to avoid student confusion when the answers are scrambled. The default choice for how questions behave, deferred feedback, is best for most of the quizzes you will encounter. It is only when using quizzes for mastery activities where some of the other options become viable. The deferred feedback option means that students will not see any feedback, nor will their work be graded until the entire quiz has been submitted for grading. Again, unless you're using the quiz for mastery purposes, the advanced option of each attempt building on the last is unnecessary. Leave the default as no. You have control over four different review periods. During the attempt, immediately after the attempt, later while the quiz is still open, and after the quiz is closed. For each of these periods, you can choose what items within the quiz can be seen by students. Generally, you do not want to show any of this material during the attempt or immediately after and later on while the quiz is still open, with the exception of perhaps the overall feedback. The concern is with student cheating. Students have learned that with online quizzes, if they gather into groups, one token student can take the quiz, receive detailed feedback that can then be shared with other members of the group prior to them taking the quiz. The other members then ace the quiz, and in the following quiz, some other member of the group will take the low score while everyone else does well in a continuing round-robin of cheating. By restricting feedback while the quiz is still open, instructors can minimize the impact of this form of cheating. Once the quiz is closed, allow students to get the maximum amount of feedback to minimize the amount of class discussion over the answer key. The display options aren't that critical. You can leave them at their default settings. The advanced setting, Don't Show Blocks, removes the columns of information normally shown on a Moodle page while the quiz is active. The Extra Restrictions block tries to increase the security surrounding your quiz. If you wish, you can require a password of each student in order for them to take the quiz, or you can limit the network addresses from which your students can access the quiz. For instance, only to the machines in your classroom or on campus. The default on both of these is unused, and we'll keep that default. If you allowed students to take multiple attempts of the quiz, you can control how quickly they go back in for a second attempt, and then between the second and later attempts. Since we chose only to have them take it once, we will leave these blank defaults alone. A handy utility is the Advanced Browser Security option. If you select this, the quiz will appear in a pop-up that covers the entire screen and keeps students from minimizing the quiz window, which makes cutting and pasting material from other sources difficult. This does require the use of JavaScript. If a student's browser does not have JavaScript, he or she will not be able to take the quiz. We'll leave these options at their defaults. The overall feedback blocks allow you to provide students with narrative feedback based on the grade they receive on the quiz. The top block starts with a 100% grade boundary. Whatever percentage the boundary is set at below that will determine the range of students that will receive the words in your first feedback box. So for instance, if we type 90% in the first empty boundary block, then the feedback in the first text box will be given to students who score between 100% and 90%. If the second blank boundary box we enter 80%, then the second narrative feedback box will be given to those students who score between 89 and 80%, and so on. You do not need to build your boundary all the way down to zero. Just move to your lowest level and stop there. In our example, students who score 70% or higher receive a passing grade, and those who score below 70% do not. We can provide that feedback by typing, Congratulations, you passed, in the first feedback box. We then type 70% in the first open grade boundary box, and typing, I'm sorry, you didn't pass the quiz, in the second feedback box. The common module settings are normally left as is. We rarely have group-based quizzes. However, if you want to hide the quiz from students, you can use the visible option here, 
or click on the Close Eye icon on the front page. One option the students have is to put check marks by the various activities on the front page to show they completed them. The options in the Activity Completion block allow you to control how that happens. The default is that the students can manually mark when an activity is completed should they wish. You can turn off that functionality or make the check marks automatic when certain conditions are met by requiring that they view the activity or that the activity is graded before the check mark for completion appears. The Expect Completed On Date is not visible to students, so we tend not to use it. We can choose to save and return to course, which will take us to the front page, or save and display to go to the quiz page. If we're going to enter questions immediately, the save and display option is a few keystrokes quicker. But we're going to return to the front page, so we will select save and return to course. On the front page of the course, there are a number of options next to the quiz, so long as we're still in editing mode. The pencil will allow you to change the title of the quiz, while the gear will reopen the quiz page we just left. We're going to click on the link, the title of the quiz, to bring us to the same page that we would have gone to had we selected Save and Display. The quiz page indicates the quiz title, grading method, and highlights the fact, in red, that no questions have yet been added to the quiz. Let's remedy that situation by clicking on the Edit Quiz button. We can now add questions to the quiz from the question bank or create new questions within the question bank that we can then add to the quiz. If no questions are shown, click on the Select a Category pull-down to see if any questions exist under any other category. When the pull-down is open, the available categories are shown. If any category has questions associated with it, the number of questions available will be shown in parentheses after the category title. We see here that there are six questions available under the Practical Exercises category, so we will click on that category to access them. Now that the question bank contents are shown, we can either examine the questions by using the magnifying glass icon, or we can modify the questions using the gear icon. The type of question is indicated by the icon that precedes the question title. At this point, we have a number of options. We can use the button to create a new question, choose existing questions to add directly to the quiz, or randomly select and add a number of these existing questions to our quiz. The Random Questions option helps prevent cheating by selecting different questions each time the quiz is assessed. You need to ensure that the questions are of approximately the same level of difficulty to be fair to all of the students. Each student will see a different selection of questions, but will be given the same number of questions in the quiz. We are going to select all six existing questions and add them directly to the quiz. You can select all of the visible questions by clicking on the topmost click box. Once selected, click on the Add to Quiz button and a copy of the questions will appear on the list at left. The default pagination setting is one question per page. If you wish to repaginate, click on the Repaginate button in the upper right. In the pop-up box that appears, choose the number of questions you wish to have per page. We will select 8. Notice that once the selection is made, the left side changes from six different pages to one single page with six questions. There are a number of options to reorder the questions and to move questions from one page to another, but these are relatively self-explanatory, so we'll not cover them here. Let's go ahead and add two brand new questions to the quiz. To do so, we must click on the Create a New Question button in the question bank. Once we click on the button, a pop-up appears asking us to choose the type of question we want to add. By clicking on the radio button next to the type of question, a short description of what that question can do will appear on the right side panel. For our first new question, let's create a true-false. We'll click on the radio button next to true-false and click on the next button. The adding a true-false question page appears. We can select the category we want the question to appear in. We use the pull-down to select the default for our quiz. The two required fields here are the question name and default mark, how many points the question is worth. Let's pick a question name for our new question, New1. The name should be something that would allow us to identify the question from a list. Then we type in the stem of the question into the question text box. Moodle comes from cows. We'll leave the default mark at one point. The general feedback area is for our comments on the question itself. We'll leave that blank. The correct answer option defaults to false, which happens to be our actual correct answer in this case, so we'll leave it alone. Notice that there is separate feedback for both the true and false responses. Since false is the correct answer, let's put correct. They go moo, not moodle. 
Since the true is incorrect, let's enter, you haven't visited a farm recently, have you? We won't enter any tags since we have very few questions, but if you are going to manage a large number of questions, tagging them with keywords at this time would be helpful. Now we need to select that question and add it to the quiz as we did with the previous six. All right, let's try this again, this time with a multiple choice question. So as before, we're selecting Create New Question, Multiple Choice, and Next. We'll call this question New 2. We'll leave the default mark and general feedback alone and enter the question text as How many dwarfs hung around with Snow White? Moodle allows us to use multiple choice questions that have one or more correct answers. The pull down just below the general feedback determines which type of multiple choice question it is. We'll leave the default of one answer only, but if the question asked what were the names of Snow White's friends, there could be more than one correct answer given. The next option is a checkbox to shuffle choices, which we will leave on the default check mark to decrease the likelihood of successful cheating. We also leave the default numbering scheme of lowercase letters. And now we move on and enter the potential answers. At least one has to be indicated as the correct answer, 100%, or Moodle will not allow you to save the question. If you have the multiple answer option chosen, you can make more than one worth 100%. You can also give partial credit for an answer if you feel so inclined. Note that, like our true-false question, each potential response has its own feedback area. We won't be entering any feedback at this time, so we will enter the four possible responses, 6, 7, 8, and 9, in the first four choices, making sure to select 100% for the correct answer of 7. We will leave choice 5 blank, and it will not appear on the quiz. We will leave the combined feedback blank as well. Unless you've chosen the adaptive mode, the penalty for multiple tries is irrelevant. You can offer hints to the students, we won't, and again add tags to the question to find it more easily. Save changes, and we're back to the question bank. Now we need to select that question and add it to the quiz as we did with the previous seven. If you look in the upper left corner, you will see that we have total marks of 8.00 with eight questions but we still show the default maximum grade of 10 points, effectively making each question worth 1.25 points instead of 1. Let's make this simple on ourselves and our students by changing the score to 8 points to match the number of questions exactly, and then clicking Save. At this point, our quiz is done. We can click on the Editing Quiz tab at the top of the page to look at our various questions, change the point value of a question if we wish, or change the order of the questions. Let's simply follow the breadcrumbs back to our course's front page. If we click on our quiz link on the front page, it takes us to the quiz page with the button Attempt Quiz Now. Let's click on the button and try out the quiz to perform a little Q&A on our answer key. Enter the correct answers for each of the questions in our quiz. When done, click the Next button at the bottom of the screen. Choose Submit All and Finish. If you see a confirmation pop-up, repeat Submit all and finish. Confirm that the quiz is correcting itself properly. If not, go back and edit your questions to make sure you have the correct responses selected. Click on the Course Administration link in the side column and click on Grades. You should see the quiz in the gradebook. Use the pull down and select Simple View to confirm the total number of points available for the quiz. It should show a maximum grade of 8 points. If not, you need to go back to the quiz and edit the quiz settings. Remember the default setting is 10 points. A quiz is graded as soon as the student submits it, and it will appear in the gradebook immediately after. When the student can see those results depends on what settings you made earlier. Once all of your students have taken the quiz, from the Grader Report view of the gradebook, click on the column header for the quiz. This will open up a downloadable grade report on the quiz itself. It shows each student, when they started and completed the quiz, their total time in the quiz, the grade, and a question-by-question -question listing of which questions they got right and which they got wrong. If you scroll down below the table, you will see overall averages in the class on a per-question basis, along with a histogram of the results. Well, that's it. You're ready to start using Moodle to quiz your on-ground and online students. You've seen how to create a quiz placeholder on the front page, how to add existing questions to your quiz from the question bank, as well as adding new questions to both. And finally, you learned how to QA your quiz and to see the results in the gradebook. Thank you for your time. We hope you found this useful, and we look forward to seeing you again in our next Moodle training.